change in the constraints of coaching. Um, it, it, it might be one something to pick Simon's brain around constraints of coaching and how we manipulate the task and the environment to start to affect the individual. However, if you don't have these psychological characteristics of development excellence, this is what happens. You get some of this early promise and it just disappears because the kids lack the hard work, the motivation, the drive, the determination, those kind of things. And we start to see a little bit of that well, I have potential. But anyone know that though is? Remember in book 14, Freddie Yadu. Yeah? The new Pele. He now runs stag dudes in Vegas. <laughs> which I think is a photo finish to be honest. <laughs> uh, but again he was another one. Great potential, but then just disappeared off. Because the differentiator isn't technical, tactical, the physical bit. I probably can't think of any players that have been top draw technically tactically and weak as anything psychologically that have gone on to have an elite career. But can probably think of some the other way. Gary Neville, average technically, six out of ten across the board, but psychologically, socially, absolutely nailed on. So you can have a career if you're absolutely solid on that side, but probably not if you are uh, <coughs> struggling with it. Then we get different types of kids, and it's important we start to understand different types of kids because. The creative ones are often the ones that we're first to get rid of or that give us the most problems. These are the kids that actually, um, they have a, a greater range of emotions. They're the kids that will be lively, bouncing around, doing all sorts of tricks and flicks with the ball. They're the one when you're trying to talk and ask kids questions that are picking up and trying to catch it. They're the ones that give you grief like that that they'll either be high as anything or an absolute nightmare and ruin every session. But these are the kids that can be 9 out of 10s. But you know that they can be a 2 out of 10 as well. But if the rest of your group are only ever going to be 7s and 8s, your challenge isn't to get them up to 9, it's also the challenge that that kid's 2, you need to turn to a 4. So on his worst day, He's a 4 out of 10. Because he can do stuff that you can't coach him. All the kids that I think of now, the most creative kids that I've worked with in professional clubs, I've not coached any of those kids to do what they did. It's from a whole host of different places, from messing around with a ball, from playing FIFA Street, from doing all sorts of stuff with kids. We had a kid that I used to work with called Jack, who, one of the start, at the start of the session, uh, they're working in pairs, and I would just get them to teach each other tricks. Just go and make stuff up and teach it. <laughs> and in the, uh, the, the one video flick flat where he kind of takes it one way and hits it the other very quickly. Jack was trying to work out if he could lift the ball in the air and do it when it was in the air. Um, so we were, him and one of the other were, were, were messing around doing it. And we had a game straight after. And I said to him, the only condition is, yeah, if you do this here, you've got to go and do it again. It's the only condition on that. And he said, really? I said, yeah, absolutely. Uh, got into the game, and I can still pitch the moment. I've sat there on the chair, so I used to sit and watch. Uh, and, and he's literally kind of driven across and squared up this kid. And he's literally just gone. And the kid's gone like four steps that way, and he's off. With the biggest smile you've ever seen on his face when he did it. We had another kid in the same game literally right in front of me, who wanted to do a rainbow flick, you know, you flick it over your head and over theirs, escape to victory, it was the idea this stuff. Um, literally, he, he just got it all wrong, got way too fast into the kid, and literally just wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's what we want. We want that creativity and chance for the kids to express themselves. But you have to recognise that creative people are different. People talk about mavericks, Mavericks for me is a, is a load of nonsense as well. They're just different types of people. Just on that, would you have encouraged him to do that if he was a centre half? Absolutely, why not? Yeah. I don't care if he used to go in football, he was 10. But he might not always be a centre half. In five years' time, he could be a centre forward or a winger. And if he hasn't then got the skill, he's never going to get it. 
So honestly, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. What I might do is manage the parents first to say what you're going to see today are the kids trying all sorts of stuff. But don't get them in the car after the game shouting on the way home. <laughs> so you might have to manage a little bit of that, but preempt it. Absolutely. But yeah, that doesn't bother me. Yeah. We might have a discussion later on about when and where and all that kind of stuff. But recognise that these kids have this. They don't want to conform to the system. But this is where the new ideas come from, when they do these kind of things. But, as I said, your view of the world as an adult will be different to theirs. You'll have values and beliefs that you can't do that as a centre half on the top of your box. In their, ad, in their head, they're thinking, well, why not? Let me have a go. So absolutely recognise some of this. Social corner, again, you probably start to see some of these things that we kind of look for in kids. Um, in August, we had three under-15s England camps. And uh, kids coming on a Monday morning, uh, training in the afternoon. End of the training session, on the side of the picture for me was doctor, physio, uh, sports scientist, kit man, uh, sports psychologist and me, six of us on the side of the picture. Session finishes, kids all come wandering in, all the staff run on, start picking up all the equipment. We get into the team meeting at the end of that night, and the first thing I said is, what are you doing? It's their toys, don't pick them up. Because what I'm interested in is, who takes responsibility? Who shows some leadership skills and organises the other kids to go and get it sorted? Who sacks it off and comes in and does nothing? That's the stuff I'm interested in doing. And manipulating the environment to start to see who takes that leadership role. Arguably, it's one of the discussions that we're having at the moment in the senior team. We, we lack leaders in that team. But if we're not developing these skills in kids, we probably can't expect them in the long term as well. So how do you go about this? Simple things for me, and it pains me, whenever I go and see football, grassroots or, or academy football, under 16s, under 18s, who takes the warm-up? Who takes your warm-up on Saturday morning, Sunday morning? You do it? Kids do it. Let the kids do it. 16, 18, they've probably done GCSE PE. They've done a warm up with you for the last eight years. Probably know what it looks like. My under 10s, within probably six weeks, sort of warm up yourself. This is what it looks like three phases boom, boom, boom. Here's the ball, boom, off you go, slow down. You shouldn't rely on you to do it. But if we want to develop leadership skills in kids, give them some ownership. Thank you. 